so FoundMaker and OData, um, a replacement for ODBC. So thank you for attending this presentation about OData and FoundMaker technologies. Um, but before getting into the heart of the matter, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, like I said, I don't think a lot of you uh, knows me. So uh, my name is Francois Dubé. Uh, yes, that sounds very French. My mother's tongue is actually French. Um, like I said, probably uh, there's not a lot of people here that knows me. Um, I have been working for Direct Impact Solutions for eight years uh, now as a technical lead. I am a software developer by training. I learned FileMaker during my first job in the field where I had to support and improve databases in FileMaker 3 and 6 format. I am now a certified FileMaker developer uh, and here talking about the FileMaker platform. So this is my first presentation at .fmp, my first uh, overseas and international presentation, and my first one in English too. So please bear with me. I am presenting all this without any pretense, hoping to teach you or inform you about the subject. Uh, lastly, just a quick presentation on who we are. Direct Impact Solutions was founded in Laval, Quebec in 1996. Uh, we have a we have offices in Quebec, Ontario, United States, and in France. We have more than 40 employees and collaborators in North America and Europe, including 26 FileMaker certified developers. Okay, so why this presentation on uh, Odata technology? Uh, the answer is simple. Uh, when I was approached to find a topic for the .fmp, I was doing uh, an exploration activity for a new client where all data seemed like a potential uh, solution. Uh, I had just listened to Steve from Beeswax, uh, excellent presentation on all data, the Big FM, and uh, his excellent article uh, on the Beeswax blog. Um, I would also like to specify that this presentation, as its name indicates, will be about all data, but only partly. Um, in fact, I will expose my exploration with, uh, which led me to choose and develop a solution using all data. I will also talk about other technologies gravitating um, around FileMaker and about uh, aspects specific to the platform and the various client and server types. So I don't uh, pretend to be the expert on this subject. Uh, everything is new to me and probably new to you too. I don't consider this subject to be technically advanced, uh, but it's a subject like many others that still requires exploration and that requires being re resourceful and creative. So I hope that the information in this presentation will be useful to you one of these days and that it will also benefit you. Part one, the context. So here's the background. Um, a new client approached us to develop a custom CRM system hosted in the cloud that would be able to act as a data source for a customer, for a customer proposal in Excel format. A salesperson needs to be able to access an empty copy of an Excel proposal and retrieve data from the CRM, such as um, some customers and products. The content of these proposal is then completed uh, for sending an approval by the customer. The Excel files will also be manipulated by other employees, um, for example, to print a purchase order or to create an invoice. You will understand here that the customer had already made some technological choices. Moreover, uh, he put these constraints on us. Um, he wants to host this solution on the cloud and he is very attracted by FileMaker Cloud, which seems to suit him uh, in terms of number of users, general performance and price. Also uh, with FileMaker Cloud, it is true that the maintenance of the server is reduced to a minimum. There's no uh, security certificate to manage, no complicated update to do. The hardware, the, the hardware adapts uh, according to the number of users. It is therefore a solution that seems to, to suit him well. Second, the, the number of users of the FileMaker database would be at most five users, mostly office staff. These users use Windows for the operating system. The number of salesperson is variable and they all work remotely. They won't have direct access to the FileMaker CRM yet. The client already used an Excel file uh, for sales proposal and it works for them. 
It's also important to mention that his employees knows Excel very well and are efficient in using it for sales proposal, um, as well as for other types of document. So recreating the proposal document using native FileMaker was not intended. Uh, in parallel to this project, the client was migrating uh, its IT services like email, file storage, and sharing to Office 365. So he would like to use the Office 365 uh, environment as much as possible. And finally, the customer has a very limited budget, as always. In light of these constraints and the reason why this client has defined these constraints, uh, we agreed to work with them. In short, we have not reinvented anything here. The constraints imposed um, have squarely defined the eye level um, solution. The CRM itself that will be developed with FileMaker is simple. Uh, but the way we will get the data out from FileMaker to Excel is yet to be defined. Where do I begin my exploration? That's always the question I'm asking to myself when I begin an exploration process, because at this stage, there would be a risk to start a definitive project with a definitive solution. We still have a couple of variables we'll need to address to uh, mitigate the possible risks. So uh, I started this uh, exploration by listening several different technological uh, solutions. Um, I chose the one that seems the easiest to realize. Uh, the first solution of the list would be the API solution. So the solution that would be the most simple to implement and to support and where we are confident that it could work for this project without any issue or exception. The other solutions would be the alternate solutions. So um, solutions number one, data would be shared using ODBC technology. Um, the client was already using ODBC to get data in his Excel file from another system. So the configuration uh, on the salesperson or other um, um, employees and uh, won't change much. But I must admit that this is a not so happy solution. Um, although I know FileMaker Cloud and ODBC, it was for project that didn't use FileMaker Cloud, mostly for the uh, for uh, FileMaker server for Windows or for FileMaker Cloud V1. Uh, if you don't already know, in FileMaker Cloud V1, uh, even if there was no switch to activate or disable the, the uh, ODBC sharing, there was a listener uh, available to report 2399. It was then documented, I think, officially uh, when uh, they changed for FileMaker Cloud for AWS. Uh, but in this case, I just hope that it was officially supported in FileMaker Cloud V2. And you probably, uh, some of you already know uh, uh, if it's supported or not. Solution number two, uh, OData. Like I said in my uh, introduction, at the same time I was reading about uh, OData. So I knew that FileMaker Cloud support the OData sharing. And I also knew that Microsoft Excel has some OData capabilities, but that's it. I never tried both uh, technologies together. Solution number three, um, we could use an intermediate database like uh, MySQL that is compatible with both FileMaker Cloud and Excel and synchronize the data between those three parties. But um, I didn't like that much the solutions as it involves three different apps and we would have to manage a little bit more complex uh, synchronization process. So this was my last resort solution. Okay, let's begin with the first solution and search for the for um, information that will confirm that everything will work. So I need to know if Famicu Cloud has some ODBC capabilities. My first reflex was to activate the ODBC sharing um, on the Famicu Cloud console because it's probably the quickest way to verify my uh, hypothesis. There is actually a switch in the console in the connectors tab under ODBC JDBC. Um, but that switch is not meant to enable ODBC sharing. Uh, it is meant to connect to remote database using uh, ODBC. So what we know as ESS. Anyway, after a look at the FileMaker Cloud to getting start guide, uh, help documentation and technical specification, there is really no mention of ODBC sharing capabilities. 
Although there might be a possibility that port 2399 is open, but undocumented, like in Pharmaca Cloud V1, um, I would not use that just because it doesn't look, it is supported by Claris. But I'm curious, so uh, let's just try to connect to my uh, test database where I already set up a user with uh, proper settings. So uh, I need to create a new DSN, um, configure the address of the database, username and password, and nope, doesn't work, but that's okay. So I killed my IP solutions almost immediately. Um, ODBC will not work. I will need to look for a replacement for ATPC and Odata is the next solution I will have a look at. So what is Odata? So my presentation is, like I said, uh, is not really technically advanced. So that's why I'm introducing you to uh, Odata. Um, Steve's presentation uh, was supposed to be uh, a little bit more technical, but unfortunately he, he couldn't make it. So I first need to know what is OData. As I said uh, earlier, I watched the excellent DigFM presentation by Steve. So I knew a little bit about that, but for your own knowledge, I'll introduce OData for you. As per the definition on the official OData website, Open Data Protocol is a standard that defines a set of best practices for building and consuming RESTful APIs. It was initiated by Microsoft in uh, 2007. That means that if you want to get data from a PharmaQ database, you can use a standard syntax and methods. And to get data from another database type that uh, support uh, OData as well, like Microsoft SharePoint, uh, for example, you would use the same syntax and methods. And uh, the result would have the same data structure definition. Uh, Microsoft, SAP, SQL Server are examples of technologies that produce uh, OData. With OData, you can uh, request um, resources, you can make queries, you can create new resources, you can relate resources together, you can invoke functions, and all that using the same syntax and method across all supported apps. OData and FileMaker does look similar in some ways to the data uh, API. Both are consumed by calling an, an uh, HTTP request and uh, get a response. Both use JSON as the payload format. They can do about the same in a FileMaker database, like getting um, delete, modify, and create data and uh, execute script as well. Um, although OData can do a little bit more, um, the payload format can be in XML ATOM, but uh, as a side note, uh, and it's not uh, relevant to my exploration project here, um, I'm not sure I would use the XML format since there is a mention in the latest release note for uh, OData version 4.01 um, that says that uh, the ATOM format has very little uh, adoption. It's going to be deprecated and hasn't been updated to reflect the new 401 features. But by the way, FileMaker uh, support partially version 4.0 of OData. So uh, it doesn't support the newest uh, features of OData. OData can update the database schema. So uh, that's a plus, like create uh, and delete a table a field or an indexed on a field. Um, another thing that, o, that, that Odita can do uh, is, or um, actually it does not require a layout. It, it uses uh, table uh, occurrences to get the context. It can receive uh, multiple requests in one call named batch. All data is supported in FileMaker Cloud 2 and in FileMaker Server for Linux. Unfortunately, not on Windows. In some ways, all data can, could uh, completely replace the need to have ODBC sharing. There is no need to install ODBC drivers and no need to open special ports in Firewall. Uh, quickly, here's an example of a request to get the list of all tables in a FileMaker file. You must define a host name, um, then 
the string uh, to call the auditor uh, API. And finally, the file name without the FMP12 extension. Some other examples uh, to get all records from a table. You simply append the table name at the end of the request URL. You can also append function keywords like filter and order by, in this case, to get all contacts that live in the city of Laval. So it's rather simple. And here's, here's an example of a response um, of a get request on the contacts table in JSON format. Let's now see quickly uh, what we need to do in FileMaker to enable auditor sharing. First, we uh, need to activate the auditor sharing. Um, so either in the FileMaker Cloud or server uh, console. This is available under the connectors tab. Then we need to set up our FileMaker file that will share its data to be able to use uh, auditor. We create a new user with a strong password and limited privileges. For this demo, I'm just going to select the data entry uh, only privileges set. And finally, that privileges set needs to have the FM data extended privileges. That's it. Super simple. Part four, the ODBC replacement. OK, now, so uh, I want. What I want to do is to import data from a database hosted on FileMaker Cloud to an Excel file using OData instead of ODBC. What I'm showing you here is an example of the proposal document. Uh, the file contains three worksheets, one for the proposal form itself, the second for the list of customers, and third is for the list of available products. I will need to set up a data, a data connection, for example, to retrieve the list of customers. So let's do that. I'll switch to the customer's worksheet. I'll select the data tab. I'll click on the get data from other sources from OData feed. I'll then need to paste the link to my feed. The link uh, looks like this, where test OData is the name of my database. This request will actually request the name of all the tables in my FileMaker file. Here, I'm being proposed with a list of uh, five ways to authenticate to my database. Hmm. I didn't really pay uh, attention to the authentication methods available with Audita Sharing and FileMaker. Mm -hmm. So I'll just suppose it's the basic uh, authentication. So let's try that. Doesn't work. Okay, so I guess my supposition wasn't right. It doesn't start very well. Um, when I've created my user that will log into the OData service, I just suppose the service was using the FileMaker local accounts. But to log, to log into a FileMaker file hosted on FileMaker Cloud, you need to have a Claris ID. So maybe the OData sharing is also using the Claris ID. Um, after a couple of research, I found many things. First, uh, FileMaker Cloud uh, do use Claris ID to let users authenticate to uh, Audita, sort of. You have to go through a process of getting an access token. You can simply use your Claris ID credentials. Um, Claris ID authentication is in fact uh, Amazon Cognito. So you will have to call the appropriate uh, Amazon service, not a FileMaker service to get that token. And it doesn't seem to be an easy task. Uh, I'll get back to this later. Moreover, that token is only good for one hour. You will have to refresh after one hour. Um, third, FileMaker server for Linux doesn't use Claris ID. It used the local accounts. So by using those local accounts, it looks like the authentication method uh, is the basic authentication type. So let's keep that in our pocket. I'll go back to FileMaker and activate access to OData for my personal Claris ID. Okay, now I need to get a token. Um, after a look at the documentation, it's clear that I'll need some kind of custom code to get that token. 
um, it's starting to be a little bit complicated. But there's probably a way that this custom code can run as a microservice or some kind of automated process. Maybe, I don't know, VBA, not GS, even Power uh, Automate, uh, which is a Claris Connect alternative from Microsoft. But for now, I just need to get that token to see if I can connect to FileMaker uh, OData. After a quick research, I stumbled across an article from Wim at Salient that explained everything and very well. But what kept my uh, attention was this, be prepared. It is a complex multi-step process and it's coming from Wim. Hmm. Luckily, Wim and his team made a standalone Node.js uh, web service that does exactly this. Get the access token required to log into OData sharing or data uh, API. API uh, using your Claris ID credentials. So let's install this on my local machine. Um, I'll just skip the steps I did to make it running. It's uh, well explained in the article, but in short, I can, I, I can start the web service inside Visual Code Studio. And then with Postman, I can call the service. And here it is, we are looking for the ID token. By the way, if your Claris ID has the two-step verification enabled, it won't work. So I had to disable it in the Claris uh, customer console. I'll go back to Excel. I'll create the OData feed connection again, um, but now I need to provide my token, but how? Microsoft documentation about available authentication is almost inexistent or um, not clear enough. So I'll guess again, Web API might be the one as there is a key field where I can paste my token. It still doesn't work. So I guess it won't be that easy. Some research indicate that it is not meant for that. Uh, the token must be sent in the header of the request, but the web API send the key directly in the request. So in the URL as a parameter. Someone suggests to put the token in Power Query. Okay, now what is Power Query? Another thing. Uh, it's the um, extended editor to get external data in Excel. So to filter, sort, and transform and create a relationship between multiple queries. Um, you can even do more advanced uh, things using the advanced editor. In that case, the step to transform the data has to be written in the Power Query language also known as the M language. So uh, I'll need to learn that. Let's try again, but I'm immediately facing another roadblock. Uh, before being able to create the query in Power Query, I still have to connect and authenticate to the feed. But that's the reason I want to use Power Query. My authentication is in the header of the request. I cannot authenticate before. Come on, Microsoft, really? Um, I'll select anonymous as I know the other ones won't work, but even that just doesn't work. I was lucky enough to have an already working query so I can duplicate that query and edit the connection string to include the token. Um, as you can see in the screenshot, uh, if it's not too small for your eyes. Uh, the M language of Power Query, let me include um, multiple uh, other parameters. Uh, the, and in that case, the ID token uh, that has to be written um, with uh, FM ID and then the token. I'm gonna save and try running the query. Okay, it's then asking me to authenticate again. But since the authentication is using the token that is now in the header of the query, let's just select the anonymous authentication again. It's working, yay. The connection uh, is established. We can extract the data and do uh, what we want, yay. <laughs> but no, it won't work. I must admit that um, our, uh, I just lost the focus. 
I was too much stubborn in getting the data to uh, import. In one hour, the token will need to be refreshed, but there is no place to refresh it from the user side. There is no user-friendly screen to accept a token. The user would have to open Power Query and the advanced um, editor to do that. That's really not uh, an option. I thought of several uh, solutions to simplify the process, but the reason uh, to go with Famicom Cloud and OData to refresh Excel data was precisely to simplify the process and was an uh, alternative to ODBC, where even though there is a driver to configure, it's somewhat um, easy to set up and is pretty um, reliable. As a developer, we look uh, for and design a solution to solve problem. But every problem has constraints and roadblocks. Some constraints and, ro and roadblocks can be bypassed or um, overcome, some cannot. With an unlimited budget, maybe, uh, and maybe I would have been able to bypass all the roadblocks and uh, make the process easy or even completely automated for a user. But I didn't have that budget, nor did I have an, unli an unlimited time frame. So anyway, I have to mourn this solution. I will continue my exploration, but I feel like I'm near the end of available and viable solutions that respect all the client's constraints. There is still a solution number three that involves an, an intermediate uh, SQL database between Famicom Cloud and Excel. However, like I said, I don't quite like that uh, solution. So before trying this one, I'll explore uh, a fourth one that doesn't respect one of the client's constraints though. Remember I said that Farmaker Server for Linux support basic authentication? That would be nice if um, everything could work straight out of, the, out of the box. Let's try that again with the same database, but now hosted on Farmaker Server for Linux. I'll select the basic authentication, enter the username and password uh, of the Farmaker account I've created earlier, and boom, Excel is now showing me the list of available tables. I'll select contacts and click load, voila. Working great straight out, out of the box. That is the solution I've proposed to my client. So despite the fact that the current version of Farmaker Linux is already deprecated, but still supported by Claris, by the way, um, and that the next version that will support Ubuntu is not yet released, but hopefully it will soon, um, this still seems to be the easiest solution and the best for my client. So my exploration project is done. The client chose that solution. To summarize, FileMaker in Excel with OData works on Windows version of Excel to create the connection and refresh the data and partially on Excel online. It does not work at all on Mac. Um, it works with Farmaker Server for Linux with basic authentication using a local Farmaker account. It does not work with Farmaker Cloud because of the authentication type, Claris ID. But hey, let's continue to uh, explore. Um, Farmaker Server Linux and OData sharing using basic hot uh, seem to be a nice combination we can probably do a lot of things. So let's see other applications that can consume and uh, audit or share. So here's another, an, another Odata consumer, uh, Power BI. Um, I don't have a full-fledged demo for this as I only wanted to show you that Power BI can access the data from Farmico server on Linux using the Odata API. The same way we are doing it with Excel. So we select the OData feed. Uh, we log in using the basic um, authentication and here is the data. We can do uh, the same with Tableau. Um, I'm not an expert at Tableau. I know that there are uh, an official uh, connector uh, from Claris. There is also uh, a third party connector from one more thing. Um, I don't know if the features are the same or if, if um, everything will work, but uh, I just wanted to show you that we can access uh, the data uh, from FileMaker in Tableau. And then the OData uh, uh, or the, 
data on a map that we can build uh, really easily using Tableau. Okay, um, this one is Microsoft Power uh, Automate. So like I said, it's the uh, Claris Connect um, alternative. Um, it's also uh, an alternative to Zapier and other services like, like this. I didn't have enough time to explore it properly, but um, it is possible to connect to the OData feed of our maker server Linux and get data using a custom connector. Uh, so I was able to do a couple things with the data. Um, we even uh, we we can uh, even do more than they than data extraction. We ca we could modify data, delete, and execute script. Uh, so in short, use all the functions at our disposal. This way, we could create a flow. Uh, for um, example, that will create a new record in FileMaker when someone completes a form in Microsoft Form or any survey uh, web service available in Power Automate. To conclude, um, sharing your data using OData from FileMaker with off-the-shelf apps is possible, but not so easy. And the problem is not the OData itself, but rather the uh, authentication and the support of the technology in those apps. Basic authentication seems to be the one that is uh, most adopted. Third-party authentication providers like uh, Amazon Cognito are not always uh, supported by these uh, off-the-shelf uh, consumers. This gives us one more reason to use FileMaker Server Linux, ideally when the Ubuntu version uh, becomes available for sure. So can we replace ODBC with uh, Odata? Yes, but it is still limited. So that's it. Um, thank you very much. I hope you appreciate uh, that presentation and I hope that all the information was useful to you.